and the wide open shot from Green. That's good. He's conducting with the assist. And that's 15 points for Draymond Green. Looking at the last game for the Indiana Pacers, it was a loss to the Grizzlies. And so in the game for the Pacers, C.J. Miles and Paul George for the wing. Hill is out there with Hill, and it's Stuckey in at the one spot. Parker kicks to Duncan, and stolen by Stuckey. Now, here's the fast break. Stuckey leading the way. Miles, that's good. Well, he certainly isn't the one to blame for them being in the hole. He's been on the money with his game. Duncan against Hill. Puts up the baby hook. That's really a tough call. One you don't like to see, but it was called, and now he's got to really make sure that he's on top of his team to not picking up another foul. That was his fifth right there. And you know what? Last season, Tim Duncan added another record to his growing resume. I mean, he passes Carl Malone as the all-time leader in double-double. Here's what San Antonio's going with right now. Richard Jefferson, he's checked in for Green. Bellinelli comes in for Fournier. That's Mills in for Parker. Five on the clock. There's the pick. Young with no one around. Drops in the tray. With Duncan in the double-doubles record, it says so much about just how he has delivered on the floor for so long. Yeah, and if you're wondering, double-doubles didn't get recorded until fairly recently. Don't let that take away from what Duncan has accomplished on the all-time Or well, even for a guy not known for his ability to attack the rim, I mean, he's got to lay that one in. He's guarded by Diaw. Whittington gets the bucket. Textbook. Nice pass. Great catch. Even better finish. For San Antonio, they've gone 6 of 13. So just above 46% on their field goal attempts here in the quarter. Outside Jefferson. There's the dish to Duncan. It's stolen by Hill. And it's Hill penetrating. And the rebound goes to Duncan. San Antonio's gone into a funk for downtown. And the boy only one of their five three-pointers has found the bottom of the bucket. He just has not been able to get into that groove yet, guys. But as a whole, it hasn't affected them too much. Now, here is Young. Diaw missing his last shot. Hill has the open look. Again, missing Hill. And Jefferson, here we go. And that one's good. Really, this defense is helpless to stop the layup right there. Just too much of an advantage in terms of the mismatch. And the pass to Miles. He feeds it to Hill. From the arc. And a clear foul there as he shot the triple. He'll go to the line for three free throws. That one on Jefferson. It's still pretty early. To, to judge, but so far the 2014 draft class has lived up to the hype. The, the top guys were as good as promised, and a lot of talent down later in the draft as well. Spurs making a switch here. Caspi's checked in. Mahini's checked in for Indiana. With the 2014 draft class, Clark, it was so hyped up, a lot of teams probably didn't care that they were losing some games at the end of the year as they themselves we're testing some younger players on their roster. Yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly there. And you look at the guys from that class, many of them have star potential. And he's had an excellent performance overall from the field. Mills dishes to Casper. Pass to Diaw. Nice ball movement by San Antonio. He feeds it to Mills. He kicks it to Diaw. To the middle. Stolen by Miles. <laughs> of a playmaker, but he's 3D in color. <laughs> HD 3D. In talking about C.J. Miles, he was filthy last year. Indiana made his start offensively, especially without Paul George in the lineup. Miles responded by putting up career highs in points and minutes played. Just an unbelievable impact on the season. 
And for most every team out there, guys, they're looking for a guy like C.J. Miles. Decent size, natural movement skills, and absolutely shoot the lights out. All in buckets, because that's a lethal performance. This season, Clark, the Spurs kept on winning as usual. They passed the Lakers, in fact, for the best winning percentage all time for a franchise. Well, some of that has to do with the struggles the Lakers had last season, but more of it is credit to the Spurs. Consistency and high-quality play has been who they are. Have been two decades. Now, here's Mills. There's a minute 40 left in the fourth quarter. He's so far in the game for Mills. He's got 10 points. He's chalked up one three-pointer on the day as well. Mark, I'm sure that won't be the last one. A lot of times, he can get high and stay high from beyond. All right, we'll take a look now at how the points have been generated so far. A strong breakdown for the Spurs. What a tremendous showing from the three-pointer all through this game. They've consistently drilled the mid-range jumper tonight as well, which has forced the D to come out on them. And Young kicks to Mahini. They set the screen. Whittington, the pass to Hill. Puts it up. Will not go. This is off the front eye. And with the Spurs and their winning percentage, it's right above 60. Bad for a team that joined the NBA back in 1977. And so it's going to end up in the record books as a blowout, a dominating performance for the Spurs. Freed, Steve, and as one-sided as it gets today. You know, Clark, there were uh, some dominant moments in there about every facet of this game for that team. You're right, Kevin. It's hard to think of anything that didn't go right for them. I mean, game planning by the coaches, execution by the players, everything was spot on. And so all the hard work here tonight converted into a tally in the win column. It'll be number 26 on the year. And with the win approaching, they'll take the first game here of two that they'll play against this team. Nice to get that first one out of the way and set the tone. It sure is. It's just a two-gamer since they're in opposite conferences. And you can bet they'll take the same approach right into game two that they had tonight. A fantastic show. And, and what an amazing all-around game it was for Anderson. There wasn't much they could do to slow him down as he was converting every good chance he got. And so it's Indiana with it. Richard Jefferson missing his last shot. And the shot is good. And that's exactly what they're going for on that shot. Mills dishes the pass. And again, it's San Antonio with the three. And you can sense the fact that they didn't want to let the fans down here. It's been a fun night to be in the building. Greg, it really has been. I mean, such a lively vibrant atmosphere and no doubt that played a part in the big win and so it's san antonio easily taking this one and the outcome of this one was never in doubt yeah they were clicking in every way i mean all cylinders go no question about that and once they pulled away they didn't let up thank you for joining us that'll do it for now this is kevin harlan saying thank you for watching now we'll go to the studio with the award-winning ernie johnson the 2k sports post game show Ernie Johnson again, folks, alongside Kenny the Jet Smith and Shaquille O'Neal. Time now to take a quick peek at our Jordan player of the game. With a strong double-double, points and rebounds, he was a force that was not going to be denied with his efforts both on offense and defense. He was dead on from the field tonight, guys. I'd call his performance economical because there was no wasted opportunities. He took advantage of every good look he got. I mean, everything he put up was going in. I don't know if there's a fan base that loves their star more than this club. Wow. He is jealous. He feeds off that support. Once they got behind him, he became unstoppable, man. And that'll do it for tonight. For Kenny Smith, Shaquille O'Neal, Kevin Harlan, and our illustrious 2K Sports crew, this is Ernie Johnson. Have a good night, everybody.